All right. So, hello. Uh, my name is Juliana. I'm from the Healthy Livable Cities group at RMIT University. Uh, and this is my presentation. I'd also like to acknowledge some of my team members who helped out with this project. So, Carl Higgs, Jonathan Arundel, and Rebecca Roberts. Um, so, first, I'd like to take a step back and talk about what is open space. Uh, so we used this definition from the Victorian Planning Authority. Uh, so according to them, open space is land that provides recreational, uh, environmental benefits or visual amenity. Um, and for it to be public, it needs to be pu publicly owned and publicly accessible. So basically parks, uh, but also beaches, conservation areas, um, things like that. It doesn't include uh, golf courses and cemeteries and school grounds, which would be in either restricted or private open space. Uh, and taking another step back, why do we care about access to public open space? Well, research has shown that living close to a park is really good for your health. Uh, you're more likely to get enough exercise, uh, have lower heart disease levels, diabetes, uh, improved mental health. It also builds a sense of community. And increasingly around the world, uh, this is being recognized. So one of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals is to provide universal access to safe and inclusive green and public spaces by 2030. Uh, in Victoria, the government have this policy to provide public open space within 400 meters safe walking distance of at least 95% of dwellings. And this is what we measured uh, using three different data sets. Uh, so the first data set, um, is the Victorian Planning Authority. Uh, so this shows the percentage of dwellings in a suburb in Melbourne that have this um, access to public open space within 400 metres. And the first data set, it uh, was purposefully made to look at public open space access. So we consider it the gold standard. Um, Unfortunately, it was released in 2017 and is not scheduled for any updates. It also doesn't have complete coverage um, over our whole study area. So up there, you can sort of see the white that's got lines going through it. That's just no data is available there rather than um, there's no access. So one of uh, the other data sets is another government product called VicMap Features of Interest. Um, this has Victoria-wide coverage and it's updated annually. Uh, but it doesn't only look at public open space, uh, it looks at all sorts of things. And third is OpenStreetMap, which hardly, I think, needs an introduction. Um, but we basically looked at uh, polygon features within OpenStreetMap that had attributes um, that fell into the categories of public open space. Uh, now, we're going to talk about the differences between these data sets soon, but first I'd like to go into how we came up with this measure. So our study area is the Greater Melbourne Capital City Statistical Area, so we're right in the middle there, but it, it is quite large. Um, we also included a 10 kilometre buffer, so any parks within this area were also included. This is just in case you live on the outskirts. Your closest park might be just outside of the boundary, but you still have a park close to you. Um, and just to show you, this is the extent of the Victorian Planning Authority data set. So you can see those gaps um, in the results. So that's what they were caused by. So we have our study area. Uh, we also needed to get the raw data sets and make them into public open space data sets. So with uh, the Victorian Planning Authority, this was quite easy. They already categorized everything uh, according to this system. Features of interest was pretty easy. They had logical categories like this is a cemetery. Well, a cemetery is not a public open space. Um, open street map was quite difficult because as I'm sure many of you would know, there's so many attributes. There's hundreds and thousands of them. Uh, I think we ended up using about 100 uh, in our definition, but they were inconsistent. So I think Australian football field ovals, there were five different ways to spell this one feature. Um, yeah, tennis, I think, was uh, a tag under both or leisure, amenity, as well as sport. So it's like, why isn't that just in one? Um, so that made it a bit tricky, but we got there in the end. So we have our data sets, but the policy includes a couple of other things. So I'm going to use this area in Mooney Ponds as an example um, of the processing that we did. So this is public open space. We have three of these. Um, we also need dwellings, so this is where people live. 
uh, we used a geocoded national address file um, and only residential uh, only those that were in residential areas as a proxy for dwellings so that's the dark blue points we also needed a walkable road network um, we used two so one was another vicmap product called vicmap transport and also openstreetmap and we filtered both of these to only pedestrian accessible roads so excluding highways basically um, i don't have time to go into the different results from these two data sets, but you can sort of see here. So the underlying map is OpenStreetMap, the green lines are VicMap, and there are some roads in OpenStreetMap that are not in VicMap, so there would be differences. Um, and we also put in access points uh, every tw 20 metres around the parks, um, where this was within 30 metres of a road. So putting all of that together, uh, we did a network analysis from each dwelling uh, to see whether it was within 400 metres of a public open space. And this is what the results looked like. So the blue points, they have access. The red ones, they do not. And then we aggregated this up to suburbs. Uh, so you can see similar pattern in all three uh, data sets, more access towards the middle, decreasing as you go further out. Um, to look a little bit better in, at the difference between um, the data sets, I've compared, so I took the results for the suburbs for VicMap features of interest and then minus uh, the Victorian Planning Authority. So where it's pale, that means the two data sets are quite similar. Um, there's not much difference in percentage. Where it's green, that means uh, VicMap says there is higher access than um, the Victorian Planning Authority. And where it's green, so those missing areas, that's where VicMap says there is access, but Planning Authority does not. Um, is that, sorry. sorry. No data. Yeah, like the green up there, I'll go into it in a sec, sorry. Uh, and so that's doing the same, but with OpenStreetMap. Um, so as you can see in general, um, all three data sets are pretty similar towards the centre of Melbourne, there's quite a lot of white. But as you go further out, there's more pink and green, and pink being areas where the Victorian Planning Authority says there is access, but the other two data sets do not. Um, and getting back to that green area, so this is uh, the coverage of the Victorian Planning Authority data set, uh, and you can see those areas are excluded. So just looking at that area, uh, according to the Victorian Planning Authority, 88% of dwellings in Melbourne have access to a public open space within 400 metres. If you use VicMap features of interest for that same area, it's a little bit lower, 87, and OpenStreetMap lower again, 81. Now, all of these numbers are below the policy target of 95%, um, but there is a little bit of difference. Uh, now, I want to just look at the major urban areas. So this is where most people in Melbourne live. Uh, the suburbs, it excludes regional and rural areas and farmland. 90% um, of people have, or dwellings have access, which is better, but still not at 95%. And again, VicMap is a little bit lower and OpenStreetMap is lower again. Um, so now I'd like to talk a little bit about what caused these differences. Uh, this is out in Warburton, it's in the far east of Melbourne where there was all of that pink. Uh, so in the north you've got the Yarra Ranges National Park and south you've got uh, the Yarra State Forest and both of these uh, have recreational value managed a bit differently but both public open space. The planning authority have both of these so the blue is the public open space according to this data set. It's missing from VicMap for some reason, not quite sure why. And it's also missing from OpenStreetMap. And this is because the north area was tagged as boundary equals national park, but the south was only tagged as, I think, natural equals forest. And that isn't good enough to be considered public open space because there's also private forested areas that are not accessible. So if this area was tagged as um, conservation area or or um, something like that, we'd include it, but because it wasn't tagged correctly, it's not in our data set. Uh, so the effect of this is that within Wolfton, this suburb, if you use the Victorian Planning Authority, 90% of dwellings have access, but much lower with the others. 
another little difference, this is in Werribee, a very new suburb. The park is just being built. Uh, it finished being built in 2018. So the park is not in the Victorian Planning Authority data set, which came out in 2017 and hasn't been updated. However, it is in VicMap Features of Interest because um, that's updated annually. And it's also in OpenStreetMap. If you look at the results for this suburb, uh, Victorian Planning Authority, about 77 and a little bit higher for both VicMap and OpenStreetMap. What this means is that despite us considering the planning authority the gold standard, it's going to get more and more out of date. And policymakers who need to make decisions on where parks are needed aren't going to be able to use that um, for these outer areas that are developing uh, so quickly. All right, so what? Well, for our research, we're not just looking at Melbourne. We're looking at 21 cities across Australia. So uh, this analysis has shown us that OpenStreetMap is an OK source of public open space data with caveats. Um, so similar to others, we found that it's better in the major urban areas and coverage is less good in the outer suburbs. Um, yeah, I think that was a good conclusion. <laughs> also, <laughs> there is a call out to Oren, who are doing a national um, Australian open space network like trying to make a data set um, that's of use to everyone who is interested in this space. You can do a survey um, about what you need this data set for. Um, yeah, so thank you. And send me an email. Um, I don't think I have question time, but. Um, one question. Yeah. One question. Thank you very much. That was a fantastic insight. Thanks. Uh, Melbourne has very small uh, municipal councils as opposed to somewhere like Brisbane that has one massive. Have you found the availability of data changes depending on governments and how they're structured? Um, yeah, definitely. Um, but more so, so like Brisbane is complicated. Um, they have like three different data sets for public open space, but none of them are very good. Um, and they try to do these like regional um, public space. open space data sets, but okay. yeah, they're not really um, fit for purpose. Um, Victoria, though, like this is a whole state <laughs> data set. Um, local councils have their own, but they all use different terms for things and have different quality. So Victoria is really lucky in having this for, yeah, or at least the features of interest. Yeah.